Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. I have about a half dozen rolls of blue tape lying around my shop and I use them all the time. So let's take a look at some of my favorite uses. First and foremost, I use it for marking all the time. Every single board in the project is different. These three may all be the exact same measurements, but I have them specifically set up for different places in the project, so I know the specific differences between them. Sometimes I'll mark the tape beforehand, then I can peel it off and stick it on, but most of the time I end up sticking it on the piece, and then I'm gonna come back through and label them all individually. If I need to mix up a little bit of epoxy, I'll put a couple of these down on my bench, and it makes it far easier to just mix it up straight on the bench and use it there. Most of the time I then apply it with a brush or a stick, but sometimes I may actually just slide it all over onto one piece. Then I can peel up that piece of tape and keep the glue in there. That allows me to precisely drip it out from where I want it directly from the tape. I don't even have to mess with another stick or another brush. Then I can peel it up and I want to keep this someplace because I can test the epoxy and I know when this is cured, it's cured on my project, I'm ready to go. Sometimes I want to work on a piece that won't quite work in my clamps and I want to adhere it down to the bench. And for that, I often use double-sided tape. If I really want it to be secure, it's amazing how strong double-sided tape can be and stop things from moving around. But if I don't need it quite that secure, often all I need is some blue tape. Make a couple loops, stick them down, then you've got something that holds rather well. It's not something that I'm gonna be putting a lot of force onto, but it holds it in place very, very quickly, and then when done, it peels up far easier than double-sided tape. If you want it even more secure, and double-sided tape is giving you a bit of fuss or is hard to pull off, then put a piece on your work, put a piece on the surface with the two pieces you're putting together, and then use a little bit of super glue. Apply some to one surface, and then I'll use a little bit of activator on the other surface, and now when these two touch, they lock. Let it sit for a couple seconds, and now this piece is in there. It is as strong as the adhesive on the blue tape. So not quite as strong as the double-sided tape, but really, really close. And for most things, that's all I need. And then when I'm done, it takes a bit to pull up, but it comes up and you can just throw away the blue tape that peels off then. Most of the time with clamps, I just wax them regularly and the glue peels off. But if I'm using epoxy or something like that, sometimes I want to go a step farther. And blue tape or packing tape actually works really well for this. You put it down on the surface, and that way when you clamp things, do it, the glue sticks to this and not to your clamp. One of the oldies but goodies is the tape flag. You get your drill bit, you put your tape on there, and you can actually flag off exactly how deep you want it to cut. I don't use this as much because I have good depth setters, but sometimes these are a little bit more work, and putting a flag on there is fine. If I need to do a lot of them, this kind of wears out a bit quicker, but for one, two, three holes, it works very well. Usually the best method for me is not to put the flag on and then drill the hole, but instead drill your first hole so you know how deep it needs to be. Put your flag on that one, and it's much easier to put the flag on when it's on the hole than it is to just try and figure out where it needs to be in depth. Now, if you like to mark with a pen or a pencil, it's actually very useful to then put the tape down on there and make your marks on that. That way you don't have to worry about cleaning it off the wood afterwards. You can just peel off the tape and go. But if you like to do it with a knife, you're even better off. In this case, you can make your marks as normal right onto the blue tape, but then when you're done, you have the added benefit that now you've cut all the way around it, you can just peel off the tape on the inside and it becomes really, really clear where you need to cut and where you don't. You remove where there isn't tape and you leave where tape is alone. This can be incredibly useful for dovetails because then it becomes much harder to cut on the wrong side of the line. Mm. Speaking of dovetails, when it comes time for the dry fit, put out a piece of this on either side of the corner and then when you have some glue squeeze out, it'll squeeze out onto the tape itself and you'll get a nice clean line. It's much, much easier to remove it off the tape than it is off the wood. And when it comes time to apply glue, you can smear it on where you want it, put these together, and when it squeezes out on the inside, really easy to clean off. I've had a few times where I wanted to glue two pieces of wood together and my squeeze clamps aren't quite big enough to get all the way across. I don't need a huge amount of clamping force on here. In that case, it's actually amazing how much clamping force you can get with blue tape. It's got a little bit of stretch and you can pull it down and for a lot of applications, that's all the taping you need. And for a lot of applications, that's all the force you need. Especially when it comes to organic shapes like totes and handles and saws, um, sometimes just putting that little bit of epoxy, putting some tape on there, it's great. You don't need a lot of clamping pressure with epoxy, you just need it to be held in the exact spot. And tape can really get you that. One of the problems when you make drawers is you usually make the drawer and fit it. And then, um, well, how do I get the drawer out before I put the hardware on to pull it out? In that case, grab a little bit of tape, put it over the front edge, and slide it in. And now, you can pull it back out. It works! 
Tape really is the universal adapter. This is the end of my vacuum hose, and most of the time that's all I need, but sometimes I want an attachment on there, and I can tape it on. And blue tape is usually what I'm gonna grab. It's not the best for it, but it's at free at hand, and I don't have to go looking around for my gaff tape. Speaking of gaff tape, coming from a theater background, uh, don't ever use duct tape. There is no reason to use duct tape in the shop. Use gaff tape. This is a far superior option. And if you are from the UK, quit calling duct tape gaff tape. No self-respecting gaffer would ever use duct tape. That's just ludicrous. And if you don't know what a gaffer is, um, look it up. I used to be one, and there's a reason that gaff tape is called gaff tape. And then, one of the coolest reasons is every now and then you come across a YouTuber who just doesn't know when to shut up, and he keeps talking and just goes <laughs> Thankfully, I have a beard. It helps stop that. I use a lot of different tapes in my shop, but the blue tape is really kind of in this butter zone. It doesn't adhere really well, so you can peel it off and be done with it. It marks very easily. It's relatively available and cheap. It holds enough for most uses. And it's just a really nice tape all around. Sometimes I use gaff tape, sometimes I use double-sided tape, sometimes I use Tyvek tape, sometimes I use matte tape. There are lots of other tapes that I use, but probably around 90% of the time it's blue tape. And I have quite a few of these rolls rolling around the shop and I always need a few more of them. Now I know we only went into a few uses for blue tape. There are hundreds and thousands of others out there. So if you want to see more of those, go look down in the comments down below because I'm sure other people are gonna be putting down there, well, I use it for this thing and I use it for that thing. And thank you. Uh, really, I will learn quite a few things because every time I do something like this, there's always someone who puts up an idea that I never even thought of. And I usually end up implementing it in my shop. So thank you. As well as anytime you do put a comment down below, it does help out the channel. Thank you again. Uh, even if you just put comment down below that helps the channel, helps the algorithm, helps us grow. Uh, it really means a lot. Anytime you hit like, comment, share, and subscribe, thank you. On top of that, there are a whole bunch of names over here. Those are all of the patrons on Patreon. And without patrons, we wouldn't exist. Between Patreon and YouTube members, uh, we are completely sponsored by you, the viewer. So thank you for that. Uh, without you guys, we wouldn't be here. We are completely sponsored by viewers. And I like it that way. I like to be able to say what you guys want me to say rather than what uh, the sponsors want me to say. If you like that and you want to find out more about it, you can go to patreon.com backslash woodbywrite or click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. And thank you. I think they'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. You know, it's not that I have a problem with the English calling duct tape gaff tape. They can call it anything they want. They have lots of other names for things we don't have. But don't call it gaff tape because I used to be a gaffer. And you don't use duct tape when you're doing gaffing. Okay, I'm sorry, I will get off of my soapbox because I know I'm getting myself into a bit of a sticky situation.